Marcus, you ready? Yeah. You hit it? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Club members, welcome. Marcus, welcome. Hey, thank you. You wearing your Auburn shirt? I am. Yeah? Do you like Auburn? Not particularly. Oh. <laughs> I just like, every time my mom goes to another volleyball tournament, yeah. she's like, there's a college, and she'll buy me the shirt. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. All right, all so right. I just have, like, random shirts of colleges. But they're good ones, though. Yeah, they're cool. Auburn's a good one. Auburn's a good one. I'm not mad. Yeah. Uh, you can't be angry at your mom for bringing you shit from college? No, it's, right. it's not too bad. All right. Uh, club members, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's been an amazing couple weeks. Um, any milestones that you're familiar of that may or may not have uh, come to pass, Marcus? I believe we hit 5,100. Oh, but that's uh, 5,000 first. Of course. And then, yeah. Then 5,100. Yeah. I mean, baby steps. That's all. That's all. <laughs> We're happy. Thank you. Thank you, club members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was, uh, I met a bunch of club members this week, ironically. Nice. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many people are like, man, am I a club member? Well, well I'm, you tell me. Well, I'm Caucasian. This is this chick I met today. Yeah. I'm Caucasian and my boyfriend is part Italian and part uh, Middle Eastern. I said, so part Iranian. She goes, yes, how did you know? It's because what Iranian people say. Yeah. Well, of course you're a club member. She goes, oh, good, good, good. There you go. So thank you, club members. It's, it's, it's great. It's cool. We're excited. We're stoked. Uh, you guys don't know this because it's off camera. Jake, the dog, is in his kennel just pissed. He's looking at me angry. He's giving me his angry chick look, which we know. <laughs> On that point, Mark, still single? Not? What? what? <laughs> Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. News flash. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes or no? <clears throat> no. Wow. Dude, why? <laughs> why? What happened? I, I know, right? I, I gave up on the game. <laughs> you didn't give up. You, you made like, Mark made like a day and a half. Fuck it, I can't make it, man. I can't. It's that uh, Patrice O'Neill where he talks about looking for the brothers in the boat. Oh, man. I, we looked for like 10 minutes. So you're, you're not single anymore? No. Is she hot, though? Yeah. Did you... Women will find this surprising unless the ones who actually want... But, we will make a dating decision based almost immediately on how hot a chick is. Yeah, it's one of those things of like, you just got to know that like, you can't pass on every option because it's going to sell. It's like buying a house. It's like, this is a nice house. I think we just got to get it. We just got to get it off the market. Somebody's going to come Good. for it. So so for clarity, we got to work on Mark. Mark's 19 and he, he hasn't been shut 18. down. At 18. He hasn't been shut down enough. And that is, man, <laughs> you, you can't tell your girl, I got you just because someone else was going to get you. I mean, it's just, we'll just spin it differently. This was yeah. a. Uh, so well, she doesn't know that. Well, but and there's no, there's probably no way she would ever know. No, it's not yeah. like it's recorded or no, anything. No, no, it's not like a like, video. What's, what the fuck is she gonna say? Well, good, good for you. Thank you. I uh, I have uh, complicated uh, personal life and largely revolving around I'm never gonna have a girlfriend. Uh, but I was, I got, I went to this party last week, and uh, I realized, oh shit. Uh, they're trying to set me up with their friend oh, yeah. and, and I'm just like, uh, and it was funny cause I was texting my brother. I said, first of all, um, too old, hot though, hot, hot. Um, but it's like, and secondly, I'm never having a girlfriend ever again. <laughs> never, never, ever, ever. So, so I'm happy for you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> oh shit. We got a lot of stuff. Uh, one of the points we're going to talk about is the first openly gay NFL quarterback and it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't know if I, I mean, I was touched two days ago, man. I was like, man, this dude is cool. You know what I mean? And, and, <laughs> and Mark, see, Mark's a young dude. He's like, yeah, I don't even understand what the issue is. But what Mark doesn't understand is the, the level of, it's not even homophobia. It's homo hatred. Mm. I mean, homo yeah, that's always the thing is I've always thought homophobia is funny. Cause it's like. Well, they're not afraid of them. Right. They just hate them. Right. Well, that, but I just think there's a difference. There's yeah. homophobia because I'm just weird about my heterosexuality, which to me is always, if you have homophobia, that means you have some homosexual tendencies because if you're not gay, you're just not gay. You know, I, I have no uh, liver phobia about eating fucking liver. You know, yeah. I, I'm just I'm just never going to eat liver and I'm not worried about one day I'm going to wake up and go, oh my God, I want to eat some fucking liver. <laughs> homophobia to me those people so much of that is you're you just have concerns about being gay what you should do instead is just come to grips with it and and not be afraid 
but it's the homo hatred that that just to me i'm just like why 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 do you give a shit about who this dude is fucking <laughs> or who cares but i i did by the way have some homophobia with uh man i'm gonna forget her name sister interracial sister just came out yeah. and she's gay i was like now i'm pissed <laughs> well, you know what you know what's her you know who i'm talking about she's stunning uh, and i was like now i'm angry <laughs> Uh, stunning, stunning, stunning. That's as much homophobia as homo, homo, homo hatred as I've ever it's had. It's just kind of disappointing. Oh, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm angry because she is a stunning sister and she's just, she's just gay. So I'm, I, that's my homo hatred ah! for her, for the hot chick who, and, and I'm almost, I totally had a shot. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> I'm almost positive. She's like, I was really looking to bang some like 50 year old overweight dude. Uh, but it, that's my only homo hatred for the forever, really. But it's the homo hatred thing is just, it's so weird to me. It's just like, it doesn't, but the good thing about this, and I, I guess we should go and get this because we had planned the show out and I said, we'll do this later. Uh, but his name is Carl Nassib. Have you seen this guy? You, you didn't even know about it. You, no, no I saw it the other day. You're 18, you just don't give a shit. Yeah, I just saw that's it on That's why ESPN you guys are better than like, us. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. It, it was, dude, the, the, the first time Michael Sam was in 83 or 96 first openly guy who gets drafted and he makes it to the last cut and gets cut. And and people were kind of, it was actually kind of okay. And I was proud of Michael Sam and, and, but it was still tense and there were still people, you know, it was the undercurrent shit about we're saying this, but we're really not saying it, but we, yeah. and that was evident prevalent. In this case, no one said anything. And I'm like, man, dude, this is fucking and and then it's it it was cool because one is I think I I don't think he's Caucasian. He almost has to be uh Middle Eastern. Nasib is that's not Smith, is it? So wouldn't it be great that and, and here's the other part of this, and 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 I'm gonna tie it into Juneteenth, because Juneteenth was recognized. Juneteenth is the date that they announced uh slaves were uh the announced the proclamation emancipation proclamation uh freeing slaves and so juneteenth is the day i guess it reached texas it's a huge date it, particularly if you're uh an, you know african-american but really anyone because it's it's for our country that happened last week and then two days after that nasib comes out and says i'm gay and the first nfl player and it was dude it literally made me tear up because it was i just couldn't believe how clean it was i mean it was just it was, it was not, it wasn't, I mean, he just did it with such fucking integrity, dude. He was just like, I'm gay, fuck you. And it was just, but he wasn't even pissy about it. It was just, I mean, it was cool as shit. And it hit me and I said, man, this, this guy is going to go down in history, in the United States history, as a historic figure because he was gay. he's the first gay person to take this step and he is going to be a national hero he should be a national hero and it was incredible and part of what else was incredible was the fact that there has not just been outrage it's you know i i again i hate to give ignorant people credit but it this they're consistent. Huge, no. <laughs> yeah, but this is huge progress. There was not this out, you know, these ministers saying, oh, this is a sin. I didn't see one story where they're trying to cover someone saying being gay is a sin as news. I didn't see one of those stories. I didn't see any stupid, you know, they always go get an ex player and goes, oh, I hate faggots, you know? And it's just like, yeah. well, there you go from Joe Smith who played in the NFL in 1971 mm -hmm. and he quote, hates faggots. He's that, you know, they go and get that and that's speaking for the NFL. Yeah. None of that happened. It was cool as shit, dude. I was like, right on, man. Uh, it was also cool. He said, I hope one day that this will not be news. <clears throat> and I was proud of, uh, of us as a country. I was like, man, dude, we, we can fuck some shit up. And, uh, politically, politically, we've been at these huge, uh, chasms of differences. But when Alabama or Auburn, when, when you have people in Alabama, which is a crazy football place, which is also very conservative 
uh, religiously and socially, when you have Alabama people not losing their mind about homosexuality and openly gay dude, it is progress. And I'm not shitting on Alabama. I'm just saying that sometimes it's good for us to step back and look and say, we kind of do some stuff right every now and then. And this is one where I've not seen anyone losing their mind. I've not seen it. Um, and so I'm, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of Alabama people. I'm proud of, I'm proud of California people. No one, no one called the dude the F word or anything like that. And in part, because he could just fuck, fuck them up too. There is that element. He's like, what'd you say? Motherfucker. I know. Right? <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about that. Cause man, dude, it, 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 it good for him and, and, and good for the country and good for, gay people. I read this thing when I was researching this and this is nutty and it's back to this homo homo hatred where and I know this to be true but it's just hard to read that there are still significant numbers of children who if they were to come out to their parents their parents would hate them. And and I read this thing that if one adult is supportive of a kid coming out it dude, I'm, I'm going to start crying and shit. I'm, I'm like a, a feminine heterosexual dude crying and shit. Um, if one adult supports a homosexual child coming out, it reduces the likelihood of suicide by 40%. Man, that's, that's a significant reduction in any kid committing yeah. suicide, 40%. But it tells you how traumatic this still is for lots of people. And for this dude to come out and do it, man, maybe that, that gets us further. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's cool, dude. I'm like, man, this dude, good for you, motherfucker. But, but how about this? Here's my other thing is, and, and I think a lot of parents who, who feel that way aren't real parents. Because the truth is, man, you just want your kid to be kind of fucking happy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so if you're angry that he or she's gay... Why? <laughs> you know? Okay, why? Yeah, I also I think it's interesting because as a parent, your child's like frankly just your kid's sexual activity isn't necessarily your business anyways. Um, but then it becomes your business if they're not doing what you want them to do. Right. But it's like if you just like if your kid ran off and like he ran off and started like hanging out with a whole bunch of like fours, yeah. it's like <laughs> That's a problem too, but right. you're not gonna say, "Hey, you're hanging out with a bunch of fours. You gotta right. do something different." Right. Right. But right. it's like that's not something you need to be concerned with, anyways. My my best friend in the world, Dow Richards, who was a doctor who died, who just I can yeah. tell you the greatest Dow Richards stories ever. Uh, Dow was one of the great womanizers. I mean, he was, dude, and he was the most attractive fellow. And he just no. and his wife, they're Susan, the best at it. Oh, dude, he was he he was a champion. I mean, he was jo- I mean, he was amazing. And so he, I had two daughters, and he had a daughter, and. I, and someone was saying, oh, what are you going to do? Because you got a daughter, Sloan. And Dow had it perfectly. He says, I hope my daughter has an amazingly healthy sex life. It has nothing to do with me. And it was yeah. just one of those points. It's like, yeah. You know, and, and so the, it's it's it, who your kid sleeps with. How is that any part of your life at some level? You know, I mean, yeah. it's you. What if your What if your chick just loves to, to give blowjobs to random human beings? Do you want to know about that? I mean, it really doesn't involve you, does it? Yeah, and I just or think it's like, it? it's one of those things where it's like once you're assuming that your child will be good and won't do anything up to the age of eighteen, like, unlike most, yeah. um, I feel like at that point you still have to respect that like adult level of privacy right. of like you're not going to come up to like a good friend that you meet as like a coworker and be like, Hey, so what's your, yeah. like, what's your, I like, was wondering what you, what, were you sucking dick or not sucking? Yeah. Dick? Just wondering like, what did you do last night? Yeah. Like that's not really your business why, and, with another adult. And why do you want, and again, I'm not being creepy. I, I mean, less, I'm not being a, uh, uh, negligent and not being concerned is I don't want to know about my here's what I know is yeah I love this person let's not make it weird yeah yeah dude I'm not you you do your thing it, it's my uh, do not my friend uh, George Gates his family owns Ollie Gates uh, Gates Barbecue in Kansas City which is the best his 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 sister had the greatest line she said here's what my dad said to me about sex do not bring home a child out of wedlock got it down other than that 
I mean, I'm, it's really this thing of who cares? I mean, I don't want to know if my kid's giving blowjobs or getting them. I, I just, it's just be safe, yeah. be careful. You know what I'm really cared about? Don't be a drunk. Don't be fucking high. Don't, yeah. don't, here's the shit. But, you know, I mean, it's just like. Yeah, I think, like, my parents have done a pretty good job at, like, my parents' mentality, for the most part, is like, hey, we raised you this way. You should uphold to the right. way we raised you. Right. But they're not coming in and just being, like, they're not slamming my door open <laughs> and being like, Are you, no, no, okay, just checking. Yes. Like, it's one of those things where, like, I think they understand, okay, we raised you to where you should be able to understand right from wrong. And also being raised in, like, a Christian household of, like, all right, these are the morals we've been set in you. Now go. Right. But it's not something where, like, every day you walk out of the house and it's like, son, remember. Right. Like, but, but you that, know what it is. You but, raised your kid, right? And that's the thing. It's like with my kids. I, here's what I know is is they're going to be, I've raised them well in the context of you, you should be happy. You should never be in an abuse of anything. And that's it, kind of. You know, and it's, it's, it's. I just, it's so strange to me. It's just so strange that, that people would, you would be more concerned about your homophobia, which is you being afraid of potentially having gay something for whatever reason. You would be so afraid of your homophobia that you would let that extend over into homo hatred relative to your child. So, so this is really about your kid, this hatred, because you're afraid of being gay and you're really afraid of your kid being gay. And it, and, and now it's all it's done is put you into this area of a wondering what your kid does when he or she's in the backseat of a car. As I like to tell people, I'm pretty sure it's kind of what you were trying to do in the backseat of a car and you know, uh, but anyway, but, but good for this dude, man. I, good for us. Good for us. Uh, as I told, I posted on, I'm a Chiefs fan, of course, because you have to be except for Andy Reid and it's okay to run over black interracial kids. By the way, this that that little girl is walking. I guess she's Oh really? Yeah, but it's ugly. Yeah. It's I would imagine. Yeah. Um I put a horrible spin on that, didn't I? We're <laughs> <laughs> well, We were there. Damn it. Damn it. Well, you know she's walking uh, now. Well, not really. <laughs> but yeah. the only thing I got against him is he's a raider, so fuck you. I mean, I don't, you know, you may be gay and who gives a shit. I do care about you being a raider. So that's yeah, the negative I think part. It, like that's the beauty of sports where it's like there were a lot of families that were never going to have black people on anything <laughs> right. until they played sports. Right, right. And then it's like, mm, I like this team, yes. whatever. Yes. Like, of course, people are going to boycott and stuff like that. Like, that's but what do you people think they do. Will? I have, I've seen nothing. I think about over them. history, that's what's just going to happen. I just thought, but I've seen nobody saying that. I've seen no one saying that. And hopefully yeah. it's, 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 but it's one of, again, it's one of these things where it's, you know, it's funny. It's like, uh, I guess, relatedly, um, the, the, and again, we don't, I don't want to get in Trump anything or politics or anything, but there are things that really matter. Last week, it's clear that the United States Justice Department was investigating political enemies. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading this and I'm saying this is the fact that the Trump people did this. It's not that they did it. It's if any elective entity, any elected person would use the Justice Department to seek out enemies. And it was stunning. And it's one of those things where I was like, people, we, we have a pretty great country. The Justice Department cannot be used as a tool to attack our enemies. And and this lack of discourse that we're having and 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 people, Trump people are responsible, Democrats are responsible. But ultimately, what we have to do, and one of the reasons I do this podcast, is there has to be this core set of values that matter to us as a people. And one of those core sets is is whoever wins the, the presidency, you don't get to go launch investigations of enemies. That's not good for us, you know? And so that that's one of those values that I, and it was funny. And then you have the Juneteenth celebration, which is crazy as you go, you go from people being enslaved, them being freed, and now there's a national holiday. At the same time, there is this, this tremendously charismatic, integrity uh, ridden dude who says, I'm coming out as gay and I'm not afraid of you people. And at the same time, you hear about our Justice Department being used to investigate enemies. And it's weird, it's this continuum. But that continuum is us as a country, and it, to me, shows what we can really do. 
you know, we can really do, we can really make it through all of this and come out to the end where you have Michael Sams who in 96 comes out as gay and it's weird. And now we have this brother comes out and he's a hero. By the way, his number one selling Jersey. Yeah. How, how fucking great is that? I mean, that even I, that's one of those things where I love it when just kind of dumb dudes like me and you are like, yeah, fuck you. I got the guy's jersey. That's because that's just a dude thing. I don't care what you say. I'm not going to be mad at him. In fact, I'm going to buy his jersey to support him, even though I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. We could still do that in this country, and we should do that. And you look at Juneteenth, you slavery, not in slavery, national holiday. One week later, this guy comes out, and he's he's a hero, and he should be. And but then we have the situation where we now know the Justice Department was investigating enemies. We should put that that that's one of those things that goes in the collective tube. You can't investigate enemies in this country. We don't care about shit who you are. Anyway, that's that's that that's the good news. Now we have more news. Back to, as you all know, we have this lawsuit against the city of Compton. Greatest uh, marijuana business ever, Zach and, and myself. And so we are trying to get it settled. And I was just telling Mark last week, uh, last night, the Compton City Council, and we'll, we'll put a clip on it. We'll clip to this. We'll clip it to you. It's a 30-minute thing. You have to watch it. It is the Compton's mayor. It's a chick named Asia Brown who is a dope and they have the city manager. I thought this, you were about to say like a dope person. And no, I was like, no, oh she, yeah, she's she, cool. she's just a dope. She, you know what she is? <laughs> is she is the she is this condescending woman who, and particularly in the in African American community, you see, I, I guess maybe the phrase is bougie. She thinks she's better than other people of color, and it's it, it drives me crazy. And what she's done is her administration, they closed our, our store down, even though we were illegal. And now they're exposed to millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars in damages. And now the problem is, is she's lost her election and she wants her city manager to be hired to protect her. Well, the city council can give them credit, said we're not going to hire him. We're not going to renew him because of what he's done. And, and that's specific to our lawsuit where it's just, they now admit it. We were legal. They said we were legal. They showed up and condemned us without notice, without hearing, without ever condemning us. And by the way, they cannot produce a list of the marijuana and cash they've taken over the last 15 years. Now, I think those are probably related. I think they've just been stealing, or as the FBI guy said, it's an ongoing criminal enterprise. We now know that's all true. And so last night they did not renew his contract, the city manager. And it's funny, though, to watch these council people yelling at each other. Um, Emma Sharif, who is the new mayor, who's currently on the council, it's Emma Sharif is not a polished politician, but you could see that Asia Brown, who's the dope who thinks she's so smart, was trying to trick Emma Sharif. And Emma Sharif just has the facts. And Asia Brown says, well, this is why we are, we're, we're getting audited and stuff like that because of new, too many city managers. And Emma Sharif says, well, I'll vote for him. But because what happened is Compton pulled out a section that says if you engage in malfeasance or misfeasance, meaning you, I don't know, launch uh, an investigator, like, close businesses down that are legal and you cost the city $100 million, we can let you go. What happened is Asia Brown and her group tried to pull the misfeasance portion of the of the city attorney's city manager's new contract out they pulled they said this misfeasance clause is out well emma sharif who you can tell asia brown doesn't respect uh says yeah you this is wrong we need to be able to pull this we need to be able to get rid of someone and asia brown says well uh emma if if that's all you're worried about we'll put it back in and so you'll vote for it then right and emma sharif says well, but didn't you also say that this clause is meaningless because it's already expired? And it was great. Asia Brown has this look on her face because that's what they had said. They said, oh, it didn't matter. We took it out because it expired. Well, it didn't. What they wanted to do was get this clause out that said, we can fire you and we don't have to pay you. Because what they want to do is get the city manager, his gig continued for a contract of $750,000 for three years. Emma Sharif smartly says, yeah, we're not going to do that. And you pulled out the one clause. And it was, it, it reminded me of my dad who didn't have a college degree. was the smartest dude I knew. And Emma Sharif says, well, but you said the clause is expired. So I'm not going to vote for it either. And it was just this moment of where rational 
people can win. And, but it's also, you, and we'll post the link to it. You got to watch Asia Brown, the mayor, yelling at a city councilman saying, you did this and you did that. And, and Asia Brown three times says, I'm not getting deposed. I'm not getting deposed. It was funny because our lawyers last week told them um, her, her term is up on June, July 1st. Mm-hmm. We're deposing her right after that. So for the first time, suddenly, I'm not getting deposed. I'm not getting deposed. Oh, you're getting deposed. You are getting deposed. And so it's sad because Compton is now at this point, they're going to, they can try it if they want, but they, they're just done. And uh, I liked it because Emma Sharif was, again, they thought they were the smart guys and then the city attorney. And she's like, yeah, I'm not voting for it because you took it out. And that's the thing that gives us protection. It was funny. You link to it and you'll see. That's our highlight. That's my highlight for the week is beating Compton up. And after they've admitted, by the way, so also we took their last week, took another deposition. And the Compton's real problem is, is they, they first, they said they had a search warrant. And then we pointed out that that search warrant was never filed with the clerk, which is required under the law. And then their old city attorney said, yeah, that's probably because it's, I can't explain why it wasn't filed. And it might be related to this, I don't know, this extortion ring that's working out of city hall. And then they had their, their old city manager who two, a month ago testified, yeah, we didn't really have a warrant. And so they got this problem is they have this, this warrant that was either fraudulent or if they didn't have it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so their approach last weekend during a deposition, they said, well, the reason we didn't have a file stamp copy, a, a copy of anything we didn't, it wasn't filed is because yeah. the judges told us not to file anything. And, ah, I, <laughs> and I said, let me get course. this straight. So the LA County Superior judges told the city of Compton, don't file search warrant applications. Don't file affidavits. Don't get any copies. The guy goes, yes. The judges told you not to follow the Fourth Amendment. Yes. Marky, was hilarious. Everyone in the room, there's two lawyers, there's four lawyers, two court reporters. It's just silence. And we're all like, and finally, and because I'm a brilliant lawyer, I said, okay. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Thank you. Um, it was just nutty. So it's, we'll, we'll link the thing tomorrow. Check it out. Emma Sharif did a good job. Uh, but it's funny to see. That's all we got. Mark's got a girlfriend. Mark Samuel Productions. We love it. He, no, Mark Samuel Media. Yeah, that's like, what, no, what is it? It's Mark Samuel Media. Mark Samuel. Why do, I always want to give you production. This would be Mark Samuel Media and production with his chick. Boom. <laughs> Boom. All right. Hey, we love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, congratulations to the to the gay dude. who I don't even know your name. And that's what's so cool about it. <laughs> but man, dude, that was gangster as fuck. And... To everyone else, if you are harboring some of that homo hatred, man, just think about your kids. How about that? Unless you hate your kid, too. If you hate your kid, then you got to have homo hatred towards your kid. If you don't hate your kid, then you, you probably shouldn't have homo hatred toward him or her. This message is approved by the Flesh Cast. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Bye.